Welcome back everybody to our Unity Beginners Tutorial Series. Before I begin, I would just like to say thank you very much to all new subscribers to the channel and especially a big thank you for all your positive feedback as well. Going on, I want to make these tutorials as best I can and as straightforward and as simple as I can for everyone of all levels to follow at home. Speaking of which, I hope you have enjoyed the series so far and have been practicing making your own scenes as per the end of the last video. So you should be a lot more familiar now with how to use the editor and how to interact with the hierarchy. As we're going to be making more levels a little later on with the aim of stringing them together so we can play the next level in a sequence. But today we're just going to clean up our project a little bit to avoid any complications that may happen a little later on. As in the future, we will be adding a live system with a respawn, as well as some enemies also. And by the end of today, we would have also added a main menu to our project, which we're going to do in just a few short minutes. So, let's begin. To start off, I would just like to demonstrate how changing prefabs affects all instances of that game object in our scene, as we're going to want to change the collision on the platforms that we have made. So let's go to our prefabs folder, double click on our medium platform. Because this may cause some problems with our collisions some of you may have experienced in playtesting. Because these two objects both have a collider each, it could clip at the point of intersection there, preventing our character from moving forward. So what we're going to do is give one larger collider to cover both our sprites. So go to our blocks, if you hold down control, you can select the multiple as well, remember. And let's simply just remove our box collider components. There we are, so there's no more colliders on these. But we're going to click on our parent object, our game object medium platform. Add component, box collider 2D. Now you'll see that it's covering just the one. That's not a problem we can change its offset and size here in the inspector. So if your coordinates are the same, then it should follow mine. So we're gonna move it along by 0.5, so it's in the center. And of course, each of these sprites is one unit. So we want a size on the X axis of two. There we go. And do not forget to also give the parent object the layer of ground. And you can say, yeah, change children as well. There we are. So once you've done that, this will now update all medium platforms in our scene. So we don't have to do them individually, one by one. Let's change now to our larger platform and do the same again. Select our blocks, remove our box collider 2Ds. There we go. Go to our parent object, box collider 2D. And there we are, we can offset this now by one, so it's in the center, there we go. And of course, a size of three, there we are. That's updated all our platforms, because we have our single block there, so that is okay. End by giving it the ground layer. Say yes to all children as well, they already are ground. And we can just press this here to return back to our editor. There we go. Also, we're gonna to want to adjust the colliders on our spikes, because when we introduce a life system, it's gonna subtract the life whenever we die in the game. However, if our character's collider was to jump in between these two, much like you saw on the intersection on our individual sprites, it would class as hitting both the colliders on each object, thus subtracting two lives instead of one. So we're gonna do the same again, create one collider that will cover both of these spikes. And we're not gonna do that in our prefabs because we can keep that as individual. We can just do that as we need to in the editor. So click on either one. I'm gonna click the left spike here. There we are. Open up our spike pick game object. And if when you click on in here, it will find in the hierarchy. Let's find our second spike. There it is. And we're gonna just remove the component. There we are. Click on our other spike, there we go. 
and we're going to now stretch this collider along so it covers the other one. So go to here, edit collider. You can grab the node there and just simply drag it along. Much like we did in the last one. There we go. That solves that problem. So it doesn't matter which one we hit now. It's the same collider. So it will just subtract just the one life. I want to avoid any unfair complications later on. There we go. That will do for now. Our project will run a little bit smoother without any complications. So let's now move on to making a main menu. We're going to give ourselves a bit of a, a boost to save time. Go to your game over or victory screen. Either one's fine. Highlight it and right click copy. Rather than create a new canvas, we're just going to reuse an old one and change the information on it. Now you've done that. Don't forget to save your scene because we are now going to create a new scene over here. So go file, new scene. There we go. And you'll see, even though we're in a new scene, all our assets remain in the same folder. So that's good. And in the hierarchy, just right click, paste. There you are. Victory screen is now in our new scene. We can't see it because it's not set as active. So just set it as active. There we are. And we're going to have to want to update the information in the inspector. So we've got screen space camera. We'll drag the camera in there. There we go. And we also want to make sure that it scales with screen size. Yep. There we go. All good. And while we're at it, let's save our scene as. And let's simply save it in our scenes folder. Let's call it main menu. There we go. Do be very particular about your spelling as well, as this will matter later on. There we are. And let's go ahead and change all this. So let's rename it to main menu, main menu, open it up. There's our main menu text. And let's call it platformer. Nice and simple. And we've got replay and quit. Well, obviously we're not going to replay the main menu. So let's open our replay button text and let's call that play. There we are. That's all we need to do there. Now let's write a new script for our main menus functions. So in our scripts folder, right click, create new C sharp script and just call it main menu. There we go. Now double click to open it up. And let's get rid of void update, void start. We're not going to use those functions. We are going to use a function from our menu script, which is quick game, because it's going to have the same function. So just highlight, copy, and we can just paste that in there. And when we press play, we want to load a scene we've designated as level one. So let's go ahead and just lay down our function public void play game and we'll put our curly brackets in there but we're going to want to access a collection known as scene management and to do that we're going to go up here where it says using unity engine and underneath we're going to type in using unity engine dot scene management. This will give us access to scene management script and functions from the scene management collection, which is super handy. And above our play game function, we're going to type public string. Now a string is the name of something. For example, the name of the file designation that our scene is called. So for example, we called our scene level one. So that'll be its string, its name. So what we're going to say that's called in the inspector, let's just call it level to load. There we are. And in our play game function, let's type in scene manager dot load scene. What scene to load? Well, we can load by the int, the index number in the build settings, which I'll show you shortly. But we're going to load it by the file's name the string and that string is under the designation level to load 
So just type in level two load. End of semicolon. Save that now. Back into Unity. And let's go to our main menu component and remove the menu script. We're not going to use that anymore and add our main menu script. And you can see there we have level to load. So whatever name we put in there is the string for the level we want to load. So type in level one. Now, whenever you're typing the name of your level down here, you always have to be aware of your spelling and naming conventions. Any misspelt name or any missing letter or using the wrong casing like upper and lower, it won't work. It has to match exactly as you named your scene. So always be extra cautious about your naming conventions, all right? But if we were to press play, none of these buttons would work right now because we don't have an event manager, which is automatically created when we make a canvas. But as we copied this over, it didn't bring that with us. So no problem, just right click, go UI, and at the bottom there, you can see event system. There we are, these buttons are now work. As we have added a new code, we've got to link the main menu code to the buttons. So let's go to quit. Let's put in our missing reference there. So drag our main menu, which has our main menu code into there. Function, main menu, quit game. Same with our play button. Let's rename that to play. There we are. Drag that down. Function, main menu, play game. Save that. Now, if we press play, nothing will happen because we haven't got any scenes in our build settings for our game. Go to file and you can see you've got build settings there. Scenes in the build, we haven't got any. So let's drag our level one scene in there and we can add our current scene by clicking add open scenes. There we are, main menu. And you can see the number here will be their index. So we use string in our script. If we were to use the index, we would type in that corresponding number to load them. And we can rearrange the scenes in here as we like. We'll put main menu at the top, as that's the first scene we're gonna see. And we can close that down now. Save. And if we go and press play, and press play, well hey, there we go. We can now run around level one, a nice simple introductory level, or is it game over? Thank you very much for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you found any of our tutorials helpful or useful at all, please consider subscribing to the channel and following us on Instagram and Twitter at Expat Studios. And I will see you in the next video where we're going to code a live system and play a respawn. Take care guys, see you soon.